Welcome to another exciting episode of the Dubik Podcast. Joining us today is Pratik Kamdar, CEO and co-founder of Neuron Energy, a company at the forefront of India's EV revolution. From redefining battery technology to enabling sustainable mobility and energy storage, Pratik is on a mission to build the ecosystem that powers the future. Today, we unpack his journey of purpose, perseverance, and powering change one battery at a time. Hi, Pratik. Welcome to this episode of the Do Big Podcast. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute pleasure having you here today. Hi, thank you. Thank you for calling me over. So let's start with a quick, light, mm -hmm. fun, rapid fire. Let's up the energy on yes, this sure. uh, podcast. One word that best describes you as an entrepreneur. I think uh, persuasiveness and relentlessness is something that would describe me better. Okay. A book or a podcast or a movie that inspires you? Uh, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight and Art of War by Sun Tzu or something. Okay. Who's your tech idol? Tech idol in today's age would, in Indian context, would be the Pinder Goel for uh, the platform that he's built today uh, and the scale at which they've managed to grow uh, the brand in the last 10 years. Okay. And a business idol? A business idol uh, from our industry, it would be Elon Musk for the sheer grit at which he's built uh, an automobile brand around batteries. Any aspiration of doing what Musk did, moving from batteries to cars or just want uh, to remain in the battery space? No, we are happy uh, <laughs> remaining in the battery space. It would be difficult to move into cars. Today. Okay. Which city gives you the best entrepreneurial energy? I think Bombay. Bombay hustles well, but in new age, probably Gurgaon and Bangalore are the cities that are doing well. Okay. And what's harder, starting or scaling up? I think starting up is way harder than scaling up. Scaling up, you have put pieces together and you're now amplifying things. Starting up is where you're figuring things out. So that's way more harder than scaling up. Is it just the part of putting it all together or are there other challenges when you start something? I think everything goes wrong. So you're hustling <laughs> daily to mm -hmm. put things in, especially in our line of business where, you know, the technology is very new. So electric mobility, we all are uh, new to it. There is no rule per se. There's no industry guideline, nothing. Correct. So we are building it from scratch. So I guess in our case, it is more about putting it together initially. Scaling up is an easier process. Uh, later. Okay. Pratik, you started your journey in real estate and yes. real estate consulting and you then moved on to co-found for clean, you know, a clean tech startup. What brought about this shift? So I uh, started off with real estate as my family has been into real estate development, continues to develop in and around Bombay. Uh, we, I was personally looking at uh, solar, LED, uh, clean tech, waste management, something uh, in that space. Accidentally, I came across batteries and more so I was looking at something which is very new age, uh, which resonates with today's requirements. Uh, so climate fit in very well. Uh, and that's how we came across batteries and uh, we got a good opportunity to introduce electric vehicle, two wheeler, three wheeler batteries. So that's how we started uh, the journey of Neuron and the idea or the conception of Neuron came in. And what was that hunger for going and finding something new to do, something different? I think the hunger was always there. Probably it has uh, come from a fact that I wanted to build an institution always. Uh, family business, it's slightly challenging, changing things that have worked for a very long time and building and reshaping that institution. Uh, starting a new company and building it from scratch is easier. So you can probably do it your way. And we wanted the business to be something that resonates with today's requirements. So we had two, three things we were looking at and battery was something that uh, strongly came across as something that we can execute well. And that's how we started Neuron and moved on. So what was the core problem or gap that you saw? I know EVs are new. I know that it's something that has recently happened. Why did you want to do batteries and what was that? problem you were solving for? So we actually extensively traveled uh, across India uh, and we found out that there is a huge demand for electric vehicle batteries. Uh, the supply was uh, acutely short compared to the demand. That time there were only eight to 10,000 electric scooters that were deployed. 
and probably around 2 to 3 lakh electric rickshaws in the low speed segment uh, that were deployed uh, high speed segment we don't have that number even today so we uh, figured out that you know the there are very few manufacturers who are catering to this segment at this point uh, second is it's a problem that the government was backing considering india is uh, dependent on imports of crude oil petrol diesel etc uh, and it bleeds the nation in a significant manner so sec- third is the pollution aspect of it and uh, so there was a definite support from the government to push this industry and we found out that the consumers were willing to shift and willing to buy to electric mobility there was uh, a significant level of acceptance to the new technology with the consumers the only difference at that point of time was at that time was price uh, we were too expensive probably 30 to 40% more expensive than ice vehicles and that was the only barrier which was stopping ev adoption to uh, be uh, accepted at a very rapid scale in india i know that ev infrastructure is still not in place yeah. uh, in the country and how do therefore companies like you work in a space where the infrastructure is not fully set so uh, i think this is something we've been used to uh, so if you take a parallel of a computer industry in the 90s we all were used to computers uh, hanging there was formatting we used to uh, control all delete restart the computers all the time those issues have gone away today uh similar that was the learning part of the industry where products were put out but they were not complete uh same thing happened with mobile phones the entire journey from a uh, sony ericsson back in 90s which was bulky and used to work for 2 hours 3 hours and we used to swap the batteries behind the mobile phone and then they shifted on to permanent uh, batteries which we can't remove from the phone so similarly ev is going through the same curve uh where we believe that right now uh, swapping batteries will remain as an assistance uh, that is required today which will act as a virtual fuel pump uh, per se and eventually as uh, the technology advances we will see more and more charging stations coming up and more and more fast charging capable cars coming up with ev i think the duration would be way shorter than the time taken by the computers in the 90s or the mobile phone industry in the early 2000s i think this all should happen within 5 years where we expect to jump from swapping to charging and also the power infrastructure in the country is significantly improving uh, 20 years ago ev in india wouldn't have made sense as majority of the states were power deficit but today that has significantly improved except for a few states most states are power surplus so keeping that in mind charging infrastructure won't be a challenge uh, so we expect that to uh, grow rapidly so there has been a shift right there was a, a how should i say there was a spurt in ev sales mm. and now there's kind of a plateau and there is a bit of a down because people are now questioning about the cleanness or the clean tech aspect of batteries itself and how mm. do you dispose of batteries and mm. things like that when there is so much change coming in mm. in the system and in uh, the category how do you keep innovating or what's your approach to innovation and addressing these rapid changes so in terms of the growth the growth is continuous and uh, in terms of percentages the spot was higher but uh, that was on a very low base so that's why the percentage showed up as 500% growth 600% growth but in terms of sheer volume we have been growing in evs year on year and that growth has been significantly consistent second uh, in terms of evolving of technology i think uh, everyone globally is adapting to what technology suits a particular climate so initially india started off with nmc which is nickel magnesium and cobalt as a technology and there were some fire incidents that have been reported in electric two wheelers across the country so majority of the india today has shifted to lfp uh, lfp cell works well between plus 10 degrees to plus 60 degrees versus an nmc cell which is minus 25 to plus 25 so we copied something uh, china was doing or the west was doing initially and uh, then people have evolved into understanding our uh, climate needs our topography the use case is very different in india the road quality is very different in india so the designs that have been made in india have evolved 
even the battery pack design that we make in india and are approved by the government agencies uh, have significant level of vibration testing which does not happen in europe or china because of the road road quality being very different so i think it's an evolving technology as we uh, we are learning on the go uh, everyone is learning on the go it's not only the battery manufacturers the oem manufacturers the technology suppliers and even government is evolving its policies as we move on and i think we are heading into a better space where it's getting more stable and more mature so the evolution of batteries mm. per se has mm. been very fascinating mm. right from where we started to lithium mm. ion today mm. where do you see that kind of an evolution when it comes to so, uh, electric vehicles so i think uh, batteries per se earlier uh, used were used uh, not to power the vehicle so lead acid batteries that were used in the vehicle before were used for cranking where we used to use the batteries only to start the vehicle and the vehicle used to run on petrol diesel by 100 years ago there was some form of traction electric technology which then uh, moved into combustion engines being adopted as the means and petrol diesel took over as the fuel now when you come to today uh, the shift from lead acid to lithium uh lithium is not only replacing fuel it is replacing many other things so lithium ion batteries today in cars is replacing sale of petrol sale of diesel sale of kerosene that is one uh, lithium ion is also replacing uh, lead acid batteries which were used in telecom towers uh, solar applications etc lithium ion is also enabling another form of application in battery energy storage systems where which never used to exist before so where in a solar power plant uh, which captures energy and feeds it into the grid which was an on grid system now a battery enables it to be off grid where the power is stored into the battery and the battery feeds the grid when the grid requires it so that's another application that's opened up so the applications have not really competed only with old school batteries per se so it is uh, eating into business of uh, petrol diesel electronics and our uh, batteries for storage applications however uh, the technology will shift like lead acid remained for 140 years we don't see lithium ion lasting 140 years so it will be a 15 year 20 year jump where we will see applications coming in in fact we already have tested sodium ion hydrogen is being tested by multiple companies for certain applications so i think multiple technologies will coexist uh, depending on the use case of the applications at what point in your journey in the last few years have you felt yes we're on to something and we know we're on to something big i think the demand is huge Uh, so uh, when our batteries started working, uh, so we had introduced we were the first in India to introduce LFP batteries, and uh, we found it very difficult in the initial years to sell that to a customer in India because everyone was used to an MC. Uh, uh, in 2022, uh, we gave a lecture in Columbia Business School in Bombay about how a battery pack should be designed. Uh, that was attended by Niti Aayog director. and uh, they took a lot of design uh, advices that we gave and formed india's policy of ais 156 norms of how a battery pack standard should be maintained whether it should be in a two wheeler or three wheeler and then that adoption came in very quickly because uh, majority of the two wheelers were catching fire in nmc correct so we saw a shift in demand from nmc to lfp so that's where we realized that you know uh, the demand is coming in and we'll be able to execute this better but having uh, said that the market is so huge that uh, even if we manage to execute even 1% half a percent of it we'll be able to do well Okay. so electric scooters in india yeah. is the largest market uh, there are 20 crore scooters in india today out of that only 16 lakhs are electric scooters wow so there's a huge scope available for conversion if you convert it at a 20000 rupees or 25000 rupees per scooter battery cost the market size crosses 5 lakhs to 6 lakh crores so only scooters then you talk about rickshaws four wheeler bus trucks energy storage so all put together you're looking at uh, 20 lakh crores to 25 lakh crore market size so even if uh, we can pluck out a 5 4000 crore 5000 crore 10000 crore market uh, it will be significant for the company fantastic mm. this is such an amazing conversation yeah. thank you thank for you. being here with us today mm. and an absolute fun conversation thank, thank you, you so much thank you so time. much